The second semi-final of the 2016-17 Sterling Sports Premiership was at David Farrington Park in the capital, as second place Team Wellington hosted third place Waitakere United. The opening half hour was tightly contested, but it was the visitors that opened the scoring in the 35th minute. German striker Pascal Reinhardt with a crucial nudge, but it would be deemed an own goal. The final touch came from Guelmo Moretti, 1-0 to Waitak. The defending champs without Ben Harris and Mario Bastia due to suspensions, so Nico Kirwan and Nicolas Zambrano stepped in. Desperate to go into the break on level terms, they had to dig deep. Justin Gully made the most of a poor clearance and with help from Zambrano, tied it up at the end of the first half. Into the second at one apiece, Waitakere were first out of the blocks again. Keegan Lindeboom with a perfect ball in for Reinhardt this time to claim a goal. Yes! 67 minutes in and Lindeboom would be at the centre of the next goal. The South African stole possession and released his side's top scorer, Dan Morgan, who would do the rest. The visitors now with a bit of breathing space at 3-1. That sparked T-Dubs into action that they scored immediately after. A nice worked team goal which began from the restart. Leo Via found the run of Zambrano who would do enough to beat Austrian keeper Pierre Minstrausser 3-2 but no time to celebrate as they focus on finding another. On the 75th minute mark, they were gifted with a penalty when their captain Bill Robertson was pulled down in the box. Up stepped the Golden Boot winner for the season, Tom Jackson, and he wouldn't miss from there. His 17th goal of the campaign and probably one of the most important. From there, the intensity of the game shifted and made for a thrilling finish. The Red and Whites took the lead back three minutes later, a superb solo effort from Morgan, who had surely thought he'd grab the winner. Yeah! Team Wellington would not give up that easy and kept pushing to find yet another equaliser. Hosts enjoyed possession and created chances, but with seven minutes to go, they made it harder for themselves. Mariti received a second yellow, forcing T-Dubs to play the remainder of the match with ten men. Jose Figueroa's side, with a bigger mountain to climb, held their own and it eventually paid off. Waitakere's Ryan Kane made a clumsy challenge on Jackson, which resulted in a penalty. Jackson to take, and this would definitely be his most important. 4 all, and that's how it stayed at the end of the 90 minutes, so into extra time it went. After a bit of a break, the team's back into it and once again the visitors got the scoring underway. Substitute Dylan Stansfield did well to fire a shot away through a tight gap to make it 5-4. They managed to keep that lead well into the second half of stoppage time, but as they've done all game, Team Wellington came back. Joel Stevens left unmarked at the far post to make it 5-0. The crowd did as much as they could to cheer on the home side and for the first time all day T-Dubs took the lead. Stevens with his signature long range finish, leaving Strausser with no chance. Would you believe it, 6-5. With two minutes remaining, surely that would be the last of the scoring. But if this Premiership season has proved anything, it's that it's unpredictable and Waitakere gladly carried on the trend by finding a last gasp equaliser in stoppage time. It would be only fitting for the man who initiated the scoring to finish it off, Reinhardt, with his second. 6-6 six, six, the score at the end of extra time and everyone knew what was coming next.
It was Waitaki United's captain Jake Butler to take the first penalty of the shootout. Scott Besselay with a great save. T-Dubs now with a chance to go up early if Joel Stevens could convert, which he did. Dylan Stansfield next for Chris Milicic's side. Basile too good and denied the visitors for a second time. Andy Bevan to extend the host lead. Strausser managed to save this one but had made his move too early so Bevan was presented with a second opportunity. The Austrian keeper well fired up now and determined to make another save. Reinhardt was the first from Waitak to convert from the spot to tie it up. The third penalty taker for T-Dubs, their Argentine, Leo Villa. German import Stefan Tillen the next for Waitakere, but Barca lay on form and pulled out his third save of the shootout. Tom Jackson had plenty of practice at spot kicks in the game and needed his third pen of the day. Julian Collett to keep his team in contention. 2-0, Justin Gully with the chance to send Team Wellington through. But he couldn't find a way past Pearman. The score even after five rounds meant it would go to sudden death Scott Hillier for Waitakere. That miss meant T-Dubs only needed this one to progress. Nico Q and the man who could secure them the win. Absolute scenes at David Farrington Park, a National League game that will go down in history. T-Dubs 3-2 on penalties. Jubilation for the host, but it was a disappointing end to Waitakere's season. A little bit lost for words, to be honest. Um, yeah, uh, I thought we had done enough to win the game, to be honest. I thought, you know, first half we were really, really good. And then in large patches of the second half we were too. And some outrageous finishing from them. Um, you know, we gave away a couple of silly penalties. Just, yeah, an absolute roller coaster. We're pleased, obviously, with the result. I think there's, um, there's a lot we can, we can look at in the game and, and analyse things, but at the end of the day, unbelievable character from the, from the boys, really proud of their efforts, and, yeah, like you say, we're through to the grand final and we're looking forward to that opportunity next week.